to shake up this heavyweight division. Most eyes, though, on how impressive Parker can look here and whether he's a real danger to the likes of Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder. And I know Dylan White in studio, Tony Bellew at home will be watching ever so closely because they want a shot at Parker. Yeah, what great division we've got right now, not only in this country, but on the world scene. And I know Joseph Parker wants to mix it with these guys, so nothing but a formality will do. I mean, he needs, like I said earlier, an emphatic win here, a big KO. But the first thing I notice here is the size difference. Kajanu, a lot bigger, though he's not in fantastic shape, the size of the guy. Didn't take uh, Kajanu long to answer the call. At about 15 days notice, he says, uh, is that all you've got to Parker? Dominic Brazil wanted to fly over. Wilder made a lot of noise. Everybody wants the big fights in this heavyweight division. The sparkling diamond on those black trunks of Joe Parker from Samoa and New Zealand. How good is he? The body shot and an applause. He's a real character, isn't he, Kajanu? He is. Great personality. Doesn't look phased at all by Parker. I know they've shared rounds of sparring. But he looks confident. And there's, there's a lot to like about Parker. You know, he has quick hands. He's well scored. He's good footwork. Obviously, he can punch. He's a massive puncher. And there are a few things that, that you know, not to like. I mean, he does carry a loose guard. Sometimes his chin comes up in the air. But what makes him so exciting is the power he possesses with both hands. You see the quick hands there. Lovely work. Great speedy combination. He will want to make a statement here after the Joshua Klitschko uh, barn burner at Wembley. Even though he knows he is expected to deal with Kajanu. The pressure on those shoulders. 66 amateur fights. 22 professional ones. Be much quicker than Kajanu already. Hands down. Maybe to spring one. Big right hand, maybe. first defense of his WBO heavyweight title he beat Andy Ruiz jr. in a close one wasn't it over uh, the distance it was a close one wasn't much in it at all some could say you know Joseph Parker would have learned a lot from that fight Ruiz was tough he was game didn't really carry much of a punch he didn't have much to worry about close nonetheless Surprised at how unfazed and at ease Kajanu is here. It's all holding the center of the ring, flicking out a slow jab. He's not really concerned with much that's coming back. He doesn't look bothered at all, does he? But he does look slow, Kajanu. He's won his last three, but was starched in a couple of rounds by Donovan Dennis in Pennsylvania. So Parker will know if he can connect on the chin this isn't sparring the smaller gloves We're just trying to show Parker Kajanu that he's not overawed one little bit and he's been in camp twice with him he says he knows exactly what styles Parker possesses he's not worried no not at all I mean through them camps he'll think that He'll, he'll have a way of of beating him, you know, he'll think or know of a way to find openings and try and upset, frustrate Parker, get him into the later rounds. He is a huge guy, bigger than Parker, but he's just a lot slower. Body shots could be the answer 
especially early on for Parker. And we saw Kajanu when we went out to the Big Bear Mountains where he was sparring with Charles Martin before uh, Martin attempted to keep his heavyweight title. Of course, we all know what happened. Anthony Joshua blew him away. But Kajanu, to us in sparring, looked fairly easy to hit. So it's all lined up for Parker. But the late notice opponent and somebody he knows well and somebody that's play acting here. Right hand from Parker. Dominating the first couple, of course. But at the moment, Kajanu standing fairly strong. And Parker's landed some some okay shots, some decent shots. More, more glance and blows, but Kajanu's taken them well, and I think definitely the midsection of Kajanu is where Parker's got to start getting to work. Yeah, he's sparring fit. How fight fit is he, though, Kajanu? The Vodafone Event Centre in Auckland. Packed for uh, Joseph Parker. Might be his last fight here in New Zealand in the black trunks and the big red of the big man from Romania, Ratsvan Kajanu, who's got a 29-pound advantage in there. And Kevin Barry was saying in between rounds, I don't want him leaning on you, zapping your energy. So he's got to be in and out like this, Parker, hasn't he? He has. Footwork could be key here as well. I mean, Kajanu almost teasing Parker, screaming, putting his hands out really trying to unsettle Parker and uh, Parker's really got to stay switched on here and there's huge amounts of pressure on him with what went on last weekend the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow if he puts in a good performance here you know he's in his hometown he's got to look good here so there's a lot of pressure absolutely the uh, heavyweight world is rocking millions to be made if you get those big fights Anthony Joshua becoming a real superstar not just in Britain but around the world with HBO and Showtime's coverage Deontay Wilder the unbeaten WBC champion you have Luis Ortiz Kubrat Pulev Tony Bellew of course David Hay if he can get back from the injury Dylan White even Derek Chisora is still going. He's got that fight against Hellenius. It is a mouth-watering time. Really good fights to be made, and Parker wants to be in that mix. He has the title. I mean, you talk about this potentially being his last fight in New Zealand, but it has to be. Bit of uh, dirty work from Parker there. Leaning over his forearm. Kajani didn't like that. Next time it'll be a point, says Mike Ortega. It should be interesting this, if uh, Parker gets frustrated so early on, for work in the favour of Kajanu, I mean he's not doing enough at the minute, we're still early on, but if he can frustrate Parker, it should get interesting. There's the speed, the size difference like uh, Holyfield Bow or Hyde Bow. But that's uh, a different heavyweight level. Parker still, although he's a WBO champion, fairly novicey at 25. And as for Razvan Kajanu, uh, many believe he it's a really not just unexpected chance as a heavyweight challenger for a world title, but an undeserved one. But he's come in. That's not his fault. And he'll be gaining confidence as these since the age of three when he was introduced by his uh, father Dempsey Parker, named after the heavyweight legend Jack Dempsey. But Ratsman Kajanu had over 300 amateur bouts and also qualified for Beijing in the Olympics. So he knows his way around the ring, and especially with all the sparring he's gained in the last two or three years different under the lights of course and the speed and versatility of Joseph Parker is this the time where he steps it up and tries to get the big fella done 
Hands up to Kajani though, he took some shots there. Parker landed a couple of big right hands, left hooks. Kajani soaked him up. Again, I think he needs to drop to the body a bit more, Parker. Crowd getting behind their hero. One point off. Round the back of the head. For Kajanu. Is that the leaning, smothering tactics that I'm sure that his team would have wanted him to adopt if he can? Trying to drain Parker. And maybe the team, the Parker team, have, have told the ref to be aware of that. Cuffing him around the back of the neck. And Parker was warned as well, though. Body shot from Kajanu. Lumber sermon slow if you compare what we saw last weekend with Anthony Joshua and Vladimir Klitschko. It's like watching slow motion, isn't it? With Kajanu, it really is. To the good left hook there, Parker has got the, the speed of hand, the speed of foot. I think that would start to show soon. It's a good right hand there by Parker, starting to land a bit more freely now. Look at Carly Meehan in three, Alexander Dimitrenko in that same round. Distance with Andy Ruiz and Carlos Takab, who gave him a real examination. Good fight, that. And Parker had to answer a, a couple of questions in the middle of it. This is good from Joseph Parker. But again, Kejani smiles through the gum shield, the Romanian colours. When asked beforehand if he was doing it for his country, he said, no, I'm doing it for my family, for my kids. Talking to Parker in there. He said he's enjoying his challenge. Does he really believe he can win it, Darren? Well, he's just not doing enough to win the rounds at the minute. He's not throwing enough. He may believe he's got a chance, but you've got to transfer that in the ring and start letting your hands go. But lots of mind games going in there. Lots of talking to Parker throughout. Nice right hand though, and he partially blocked by Kajani. Yeah. Farka and beaten Razvan Kajanu isn't. He's lost a couple of times. Donovan Dennis and on his debut to Alvaro Morales. Really learnt on the road though. Now lives in uh, Burbank, California. Proud of the Romanian heritage of course just as Joseph Parker is his Samoan and New Zealand roots it's David Tua a great heavyweight under Kevin Barry from these parts and 12 rounds with Lennox Lewis of course never quite Mike Tyson was he you sort of wondered at one point you can see the similarities the black shorts the physique if you like not as quick or as devastating or as talented as Tyson. No, but it was exciting in his own way. I mean, there's there's only ever going to be one Mike Tyson, my favourite all-time fighter. I mean, amazing. But uh, just just watching this one, Kajana, I'm just thinking he's almost guilty of a bit becoming a sparring partner, you know, too long. Tyson, who is talking up AJ this week, and how uh, exciting. And how much he enjoyed that fight. He believes it's a new era in heavyweight boxing. And we remember those famous lines when he stunned Trevor Burbick and became the youngest ever world heavyweight champion back in the 80s. And with the American commentary saying, we have a new era in boxing. And Mike Tyson gave us that. Holyfield, Lewis, Bo, great times. And great times are upon us again. Beating him to the punch, but that's better from Kajano, just getting through with the right hand. And he's still sticking about. Yeah, I mean, he, he's showing more intent now. What I was saying before, when you become a sparring partner, sometimes you can transfer that into the ring. But if he opens up, he'll leave more gaps, won't he? Good body shots from Parker, complaining they're a bit low, Kajano. Yeah, you're right, I think... Joseph Parker will be quite happy that Kajani's coming back with shots because the openings will come. 
But this is starting to become quite a frustrating evening for Parker, this. It certainly is. We wonder what uh, Anthony Joshua, Tony Bellew, and the others are uh, thinking of the Parker performance against this late substitute. He meant to blow them away. Sometimes it's not as easy as that. He's the victory, Parker, more than anything. Kajanu. What will he have to offer in the second half of this? Not winning the rounds. Time. And of course, Joseph Parker in a couple of camps before Dimitrenko and before this one. He was meant to fight Huey Fury. How difficult, Darren, as a, a former fighter, is it when you get that last minute switch and it's someone totally different, although he sparred with him? There's nothing like being in the ring for real. No, of course not. I mean, it does completely mess mess up your plans and your preparation. But ultimately, when that first bell goes, it's a fight. And you, you trained to get the job done. And that's what we're looking for Parker to do here. I mean, it is, it is very frustrating, but when you look at what, at what is out there for Parker, I mean, he really does need to get the job done and in good fashion. People were saying he's the next coming, Joseph Parker. I think the Carlos Takam fight just uh, made one or two in the trade reconsider. Takam very tough and strong, but could have won that. And, you know, many felt Andy Ruiz was unlucky. Very tight on the cards. I know Top Rank felt that he won and... The height machine is one thing. But Parker's got to prove it. Now he is the WBO champion. I mean, you could also, I mean, there's question marks flag on Parker's power. I mean, he looks very explosive, a huge puncher against lesser opposition. But when you put him in with the likes of Carlos Takam, Ruiz, and now Kajanu, his power's question, you know, questioned. He's landed a couple of times here, yes, glancing blows, but he's not hurt Kajanu at all. And you've got to say, Kajanu's slow, has been knocked out before, has only had a couple of weeks, you know, to prepare for a world heavyweight title fight. Many will be saying Joseph Parker should have found a way to stop Kajanu by now. There's not a lot coming back from Kajano. I mean, as far as trying to win rounds, he's, you know, big, slow, single shot. Slow one-twos. Really frustrating Parker more than actually letting his own shots go and trying to win rounds. The physical size of him, the bulk. There was a couple of moments in the Takam encounter that Parker just seemed tired. Sure, his corner won't want Kajanu just hanging around for 12 rounds in case something like that could happen. It's all Parker though on the front foot when he gets his combinations going. You know, he's winning the rounds, no problem. But Kajanu taking them to the big one. If he comes a cropper here, all the big, you know, clashes with Joshua and Wilder go flying out of the window but how are you assessing Parker thinking about Tony Bellew and Dylan White lining up I would love to see those guys in with Parker and I give them a huge chance against him I mean it's a difficult one to judge Parker on this but when you look back at his career so far there has been the times where he's failed to, to impress the one plus he does have and that huge bonus is that he is the WBO champion so if he does win like you say and in not great fashion he's still got the big fights out there because you talk about these guys wanting to unify he has something that they want good body shots from Parker one back from Kajanu who's throwing so few punches he can't possibly be taking any of these rounds but most predicted an early blowout for Parker it hasn't happened yeah Kajanu not winning the rounds Parker pretty comfortable, though he's looked frustrated. 
I'd like to see him just up the tempo a bit more, go through the gears. Again, Kajali talks to Parker in there. We saw Joshua doing that with Klitschko the other night. It does look a bit chalk and cheese, though, to what we had at Wembley in terms of quality. Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, th this is way off. I mean, it really is way off, but... Again, the, the fortunate thing for Parker is he was managed. He's managed to win that WBO BO title, so he's he had something the guys won. Just delivered a couple of body shots there, Kajanu, and Parker on the back foot. <laughs> the Romanian's fit enough and can stay out the rounds here. Parker's going to have to make sure there's plenty in the tank. No danger of that at the moment. He's still firing out the punches it's never nice being walked down by the bigger guy you see there he's almost looking to hold there Parker but if you're Kajanu and you're saying you're doing it for your family and it's your big chance you've just got to start letting some more shots go I mean he's at the stage now he's got to where he is midway through the fight he's cocking that right hand Kajanu he's just thinking I'm, I'm going to stay this out for a bit I'm going to let Parker unload his pretty combinations and I'm just going to go for it with a couple of big shots at some stage. Maybe that's the tactics. I just don't think Kajanu has the tempo or the speed to do that. He's certainly not got the speed, but at heavyweight... He's just not winning the rounds at all. Eight round, first defense of his WBO heavyweight title. Joseph Parker beat Andy Ruiz just before Christmas in the Spark Arena in Auckland and in this Vodafone event center. Took out Alexander Dimitrenko. Unbeaten, never in any real trouble. Joseph Parker throughout his pro career so far. Lost rounds against Andy Ruiz, but found a way. And he's dominating here against this big, slow Razvan Kajanu, who's just proven an absolute nuisance for Parker. The question is, is there any chance of Kajanu still upsetting the odds? Well, I think so, Adam. That There's nothing there, really. I mean, he hasn't got the speed, he hasn't got the tempo. It doesn't seem like he has the big punch. So to worry Parker, the only thing he has in his favour is he's, he's able to frustrate Parker. Has it become a bit of a sparring session like they've enjoyed in the past? Exactly what I was thinking, Adam. It's, it seems that way. It's just uh, the quicker hands, the movement of Parker, and the slow, cumbersome move and movement of, of Kajanu. It, it, it's looking that way. But he hasn't managed to hurt him, Parker. And Donovan Dennis blew him away. Remember that right hand. Huge shot, huge punch. Timed beautifully, big overhand right it was. Put Kajanu to sleep. Parker's got to try and find one of those himself. Again, I'll say it, I, I mean, he's very fortunate, lucky. I would say fortunate, he, he, it's, it's a bonus he's got that WBO title already because I'm not sure if he's a big enough draw on the world scene to, to, to warrant a big fight. It's just that WBO strap that he's got. And you wonder if Huey Fury hadn't had that back injury, how he might be faring on this night. Do you know what? I'm watching this, this performance, and we know exactly what Parker's gone through, change of opponent, etc. But if he was Huey Fury, Fury was to have fought this Parker, I would have given him a huge chance. I mean, if I'm at home and I'm Tony Bell, you, I'm, I'm picking up the phone and calling Eddie Earl and asking for this fight desperately. I think Dylan White, I think Tony Bellew, I think everybody will be on to Eddie Hearn to get Joe Parker to the UK. Kajanu beating his heart and saying, come on then. Parker with a nifty combination. Still quality punches at time from the New Zealand man. And as I said, never really in any bother in notching up the round. So you've got to say he's at the moment, you know...
um, keeping it watchable at times because Joe Parker, while winning these rounds, has certainly not been setting anything alight. Well, Adam, before the fight started, we did not envision it going nine rounds, that's for sure. Kajani played his part. He's been awkward, playing mind games, constantly talking to Parker throughout. But when you think of ambition on his side, I mean, this was his chance. Well, this is his chance to become world heavyweight champion. He's just not done enough, and I don't know if it's... He just doesn't have it in his locker. Probably doesn't have it in his locker, and also thought he's such an underdog that just getting through this would lead to, you know, future paydays, possibly, you know, as a as an opponent but you've got that opportunity and they don't come around that often to fight for the world heavyweight title against a joseph parker who doesn't look a beast he doesn't look you know enormously heavy-handed or and kajanu just not going for it do you know what adam it, it's what i said there he just he just can't he just doesn't have the ability to be able to force any questions really and it, it's a shame on both parts because the, the vision is absolutely booming and you would just think he would throw more try and la load up with a big right hand mix it up a bit more he's just not done that that's good from parker doubling up with a jab way out with the uppercut back comes kajanu trying to walk down the champion but not throwing the punches to win in the fight. Can't give him a round, can you? No, you can't. And there's also a 10-8 round in there. When the point was deducted. Parker there. There was a look of frustration. But again, I'll say it. He is the WBO champion. People want that belt. So there's big fights out there for him. He's just not impressed at all here. And he might have been really flat when he found the Fury fight. Went. That's who he was training for. In comes a sparring partner. Yeah, tough mentally maybe to motivate yourself. But he did say beforehand that he wanted to give his beloved New Zealand people the perfect goodbye present. He has to ship a shot there from Kajanu. He just again tries to lean on him. And frustrate and infuriate Joe Parker. Going walkabouts, Parker. Break, break my head. He's getting ugly and messy. And expecting more of him. 100%, and no one will be expecting more than Parker himself. He knows he's better than this for whatever reason hasn't performed this evening but getting the job done winning the rounds winning the fight comfortably maybe he's got an eye on one of the other title holders thinking of the the big money shots out there i mean it's been comfortable this he's been frustrated at times but he, he's winning easy i mean you could he could be guilty of thinking of other fights it, it has been that easy at times He's just seemed flat, really, after the first couple where I thought he might try and explode and, and get on top of Kajanu early and hurt him. He's, he's let the heavy Romanian just stay there. Looking a bit like Nikolai Valoev. You know, that's a huge size and cumbersome and slow, but, you know, strong and tough. Yeah, the, you do look back at Donovan Dennis, the knockout, though. You do. And I think that's another reason Parker would be so frustrated that he's not been able to land that shot of his own. And though he has caught Kajanu, he's not managed to hurt him at all. And if we if we switch the attention to Kajanu and you think to yourself, look, we've, all, we've already said it, you've got a chance to become heavyweight champion of the world. But Darren, he's coming off wins over Grover Young, a journeyman, Christian Martinez, who'd lost all three, Zi Wu in China. Yeah, and he's challenging for a world title. It's an enormous step up for Kajanu to be even sharing a ring with Parker for real here.
he just isn't good enough. Well, that's the problem. He's just not good enough. But you'd like to just throw everything in there with the opportunity of becoming champion. But like you say, you're right. He's just not good enough. And this this hasn't been pretty at all. I mean, it, like you said earlier, a few rounds back, it is almost like a sparring session. But it will be job done for Parker and, and on to the next. And Eddie Hearn and Tony Bellew and Dylan White and Anthony Joshua, if he is even watching this, will not be losing any sleep at all. Parker continuing to utilize every bit of the ring now, keeping out of the way of the huge Romanian, sprinkling him with shots when he can, in and out, but a big left there from Kajanu. Come on, he says. Parker responds. Kajanu tempting him in. Has he got the hand? Here's the 11th. Gets hold in the middle of the ring. Razvan Kajanu. Will he throw enough leather to give himself any opportunity? He's lost every round here. Remember the point off as well. Three judges at ringside. Dan Rex, Tannenson, George Martinez, Dion Devate. Two of them very, very experienced. And it will be unanimous and wide unless Kajanu can do something late on we saw real drama in the 11th round at Wembley as AJ came back from the brink to defeat Vladimir Klitschko and everybody over the last few days has been saying one of the great fights in recent years an epic this one certainly hasn't been <laughs> polar opposites Adam and I can't see any entertainment or excitement brewing in this round either if that was a fight night to remember, this is one to notch up and forget, really. And I think for Joe Parker, too, he will be annoyed that he hasn't managed to perform, I guess, to the ability and the level that he believes he can and his team do. But a win is a win. And Kevin Barry has been pretty calm throughout. It'll be interesting to hear what he has to say afterwards. Were the tactics just to stay away and win on points and not go for something dramatic? Do you know what? This is poor from Parker, in my opinion. I mean, it's the 11th round. And you ju he's just not letting anything go. He's not, he's not forcing the stoppage. You think, I'm the heavyweight champion of the world. I'm the WBO heavyweight champion of the world. I haven't boxed, ba I haven't boxed badly for 11 rounds. I'm really going to get to work now. And he's just not doing it at all. He's just coasting, moving. He knows he's won, he knows he's won the fight. But just not letting anything go. And Kajanu begins to unleash some punches of his own. Again, just stretching all over Parker. Here's the New Zealand tiring. Is he running out of uh, ideas? Of patience, really. I think he just wants this done, doesn't he, Darren? He does. Uh, I just keep thinking of the other guys in the division. You talk about Dillian White and, and Tony Bell. You, I would have itchy feet right now. I would be desperate, desperate to get in there with Parker. I bet Dylan's shadow boxing in the studio. <laughs> I really do. I think he would absolutely relish this. He's got Marius back to take care of first, but he's talking about September, possibly. Joe Parker for the WBO title. And after the thriller he had with Derek Chisora. I'd be very, very excited to see that happen. And maybe too, it'd be Tony Bellew's chance to become... Six minutes of action, or really lack of it, Darren. Yeah. Um, this will soon leave the memory. It's, 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 it's been a poor fight, but it's been a successful defence, if you like, unless some miracle does happen and Kajani can find... A big shot here, which I can't see happening because he's just not quick enough. You, there's no element of surprise there, and just doesn't have it in the locker. Though so he landed the right hand there, Parker was leaning back. There's another guy we haven't mentioned, Luis Ortiz. I mean, a great fighter in the division who's another one watching on who would love this. Yep, undefeated. Good jab from Parker there. 
You can see some quality. He's got tools, he's got ability. Can he do it at the top, top level? WBO champion. Talking about unifications. I'll put you on the spot here. Will Dylan White beat Joe Parker? There's a very good chance, and I would put White favourite. I would. Just because he's... Dylan's awkward. He's been in there and he's confident. I think he's got a lot of confidence from the Anthony Joshua fight and he believes in himself. And I give him a good crack. And as I do Tony Bellew. He believes in himself. He believes he's the best heavyweight in the world. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Great to have that. And I'm sure Joshua would love another fight with White at some point. So many great ones to happen. Will Vladimir Klitschko take the rematch? We wait and see. Deontay Wilder is uh, right there tyson fury of course could come back to the fold that'll be terrific if he can uh, get the weight off and deal with issues out of the ring pajanu coming towards the end of the 12th round i bet in his heart of hearts he really didn't think he'd see this no no degree and um, the frustrating thing is he's starting to let his punches go in the last round and you think to yourself could have done that earlier could have something amazing happened it's been, it's been a survival job really for Kajanu. it's been pretty negative in the fact that i don't think he really ever fancied taking parker out or maybe he just couldn't parker on the on the move now and um, you know boxing his way home he's in sparring mode i mean he couldn't shake it off it's, it's a shame he, he, though he hasn't had it in his locker he's just not been able to shake off that sparring partner mode he's got into Yep, two former sparring partners giving us that really on the big stage. We hope for more and Joe Parker tries to finish with a few combinations to remind the crowd and us what he's capable of. Gentlemen, after 12 rounds of World Champion Heavyweight Boxing action, we go to the judges' scorecard for a decision. Judge Dion Duarte scores the contest 108-119. And Geraldo Martinez and Dan Rex tap dancing score the bout 110-117 for your winner by unanimous decision. And still the WBO heavyweight champion of the world, Lupe few words before we dissect the fights and now's your time oh yeah firstly thank our heavenly father for this victory what a fight i guess we can all see why we bring razvan into camp with us because we look for the best to prepare for the fights that we have i'd like to thank razvan and his team for coming down and putting on a great fight uh hopefully it's uh it was a great fight for you it's probably one of our last one for a while so i'd just like to thank you all for coming out and supporting us throughout my whole career so far. And I'd like to thank everyone in attendance, thank my parents for being here, my team, Coach Kevin Barry for all the hard work we've done, and thank the Prime Minister of Samoa and the team for being here today. Joe, from a very early or young age in boxing, did you ever realize that you was gonna win a world title and defend the world title on New Zealand soil? If that's the last fight we see here for some time, what's your thoughts on that now? Uh, you know, I've, I've done my best to keep the fight here in New Zealand. I guess it's time for us now to move overseas and get some exposure overseas. But I um, don't think that I will get a world title at this age. But it comes down to the team that we have. Coach, we have a great partnership. And just without, without all the support of people here and people back home, we wouldn't be here today. So once again, big thank you. And uh, I'll get Kevin to say a few words. If you like. Kevin, there's no one better in heavyweight history at the moment current that know Joseph Parker as well as Razvan and, and it proved to be a difficult task to to try and get that fight out of him well if you remember you know I told everyone when you wrote Raz, Razvan off that this was a real guy and this would be a harder fight than Huey Fury but the TAB never listened a lot of other people never listened 
We've sparred 100 rounds with this guy. We know how friggin' tough he is, and he's a very proud man, as you can see today. He was, he was fighting with pride and dignity. We knew it would be a tough fight. And still, tough fight. Plenty of support in the crowd, wooing and cheering Joe on to get success. You yourself, in the late rounds, were saying, look, Joe, make sure we get the win. Don't give him an opportunity to get the lucky punch. Sure, you know, hey, Rez was trying from the first round to the 12th round. You know, as you saw, he let his hands go. He was looking for the punch. It only takes one punch to change the championship. And, you know, when I realized it was going to take us a while to break him down, I said to Joe, you know, just be patient. You know, Rez is fighting the fight of his life. Don't help him get lucky. And you see, right up to where the bell went, he was still throwing punches, trying to win the title. We saw a great title fight last week. Obviously, this didn't live up to the hype, but in terms of... Uh, the other big names around the world. You've said uh, pre earlier on in the night that you will take them on tomorrow. Is that still the case? Yeah, most definitely. You know, styles make fights, and uh, you know it's our time now to travel overseas and campaign over there.